So we should be good to go. If you're out there, please let me know in the chat. What's up, Ben? What's going on? How's it going, man? Ah, uh, pretty good. Wasn't sure for live yet. <laughs> we are live. I was having uh, some technical issues with uh, with going live, like of course, right at the end. So I was just fumbling to get it straight. And I'm actually, um, we are live. Let me just make sure that we're good. So let me pull up the chat. Hopefully people out there can let us know that they can hear. They can hear us. So just hang tight for one second. How are you doing, man? Pretty good. Uh, label just announced the album yesterday. So lots of sharing that around. Yeah. Uh, what about yourself? All good, man. Just, uh, you know, making content grad school all that stuff you know <laughs> just yeah it's just bu busy 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 uh cranking videos out and all that stuff but yeah, all, awesome. all good man yeah and i think i think we're good and let me get in the chat here for one second but we should we should be good Okay, so today we're talking about guitar effects, guitar pedals, and all that fun. I think it's like one of the most, like, best things about playing electric guitar, you know, because um, it's just like exploring different kind of sounds be beyond what you're already doing on the instrument. I mean, you can get you can get pretty crazy, and if you guys didn't know already, Ben wrote. Uh, Kickass bl uh, blog. What was it like? About a month ago, a month and a half, you would say. Oh, it was last one. Would have been like a really long time ago now. Uh, oh that damn! Was one. Been a uh, like summer twenty nineteen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and unless it was a different one you're talking about. No, it's probably the same one because okay. I went off of your your post uh, to make a video, so that okay. that in that informed a uh, big big. Uh, big part of yeah. it so yeah also we really want yeah yeah <laughs> it's i mean it's evergreen right like it's it's still relevant it's not like it's gonna go go yeah, out of no, out of style or anything like that your pedals still do the same thing they did a year ago but, <laughs> yeah. yeah some of the some of the most popular pedals are still that were popular like 40 years ago are still like some of the top ones now um so yeah man and we're basically going to go over a few things here, which is just breaking some of the basics down, maybe going to some of the essentials that like every guitar pedal board should have, especially, you know, like the, the must haves. And then there are the ones that are just like the icing on top of the cake. And then from there on, we're going to have a special guest in about 20, 25 minutes, which is Curtis. If you guys don't know, he's an amazing teacher with us here and he's a huge uh gearhead and into pedals and like i know he definitely knows his stuff so why don't we we get started man and maybe when you take because i loved your explanation on drives like i i've always like kind of know but when i read your post i was like man you know like uh ben really broke it down so we don't why don't we start with that i feel like that's a big question like what's the difference right. between a distortion and overdrive and like all that all that good stuff yeah so we have three kind of main types of dirt pedals there's distortion uh which my distortion's kind of plugged in right now <laughs> i was trying to pull that one out and you got uh fuzz pedals which is this kind and we've got overdrive which is this third one and um, they all work in similar ways, but they each kind of manipulate the signal in a slightly different way technically, and they result in pretty a uh, wide range of actual tones because of that. Uh, so this is an overdrive pedal. It's gonna plug this guy in. Uh, so this is like the kind of the OG sort of distortion or dirt pedal. Um, so before pedals existed, people were kind of creating overdrives through creative means. So Muddy Waters uh, dropped an amp, broke the tone. I broke the cones, sorry. And Ike Turner did the same thing around the same time. They got this natural overdrive. And then the Kinks uh, tried to do that on purpose, so they cut it with razor blades. So what this does is it just uh, kind of boosts the signal so much that it naturally breaks up. 
So it gives you a very kind of natural sounding dirt. So this is what an overdrive is like. <laughs> kind of controlled nothing too crazy uh it's great if you want the kind of classic rock sound uh then after that we got fuzz pedals uh, which is these guys uh so what they do is they really just kind of mess up the signal they give it these really big spikes and that gives it a very kind of distinctive dirt sound which is a lot like fuzzy it's the, the name's accurate <laughs> uh so these started coming out in the 60s uh so, got a lot more attitude than an overdrive. Uh, Jimmy Hendrix was the player who really popularized the um, although Keith Richards, uh, he played it on Satisfaction. Oh, I forget the riff. Um, it's all that good. Was, uh, <laughs> first well known use of it was uh, I can't get no satisfaction. And um, they got really popular again with like the white stripes and the black keys. Use these a ton. So that kind of like modern blues rock, uh, the whole kind of kind of genre. Uh, right now, uses those. And then last, we got distortion, uh, which is the distortion I got with me right now. Um, and this is more similar to a fuzz pedal on a technical level, um, but it takes it a bit further. It uh, not only just kind of boosts to the point that it naturally breaks, but then actually shatters the signal itself. So you got a lot more of a spiky signal. So it's kind of like an overdrive on the steroids. A lot thicker, a lot crunchier. This is only like on like halfway. Uh, so if you're playing like, if you're like a metal player, uh, trying to do those kind of you know, like a, anything like that, like a hardcore punk player, you really kind of needed distortion to get that classic sound. Mm -hmm. um, it's the most extreme of the three, and probably the most popular nowadays, although traditionally it wasn't. So that's yeah. That's my thing on drive pedals. <laughs> that's no, that's awesome. Yeah, great breakdown and, and demo, man. Because, like, I was thinking for fuzz pedals, I also think a lot of like stoner rock, like Queens of the Stone Age, yeah. and like that. You know. <laughs> And then everything in the middle from like punk rock, like you said, metal gets that distortion sound. And then all the blues and classic rock guys get the get the overdrive, you know? Yeah, and that's, that's a good way to put it, like genre wise. Um, yeah. Yeah. Also, if you're uh, uh, in the shoegaze at all, like the main thing shoegaze sound is like just insane amounts of distortion, distortion. That helps uh, then when you pair that with enough kind of delay and reverb, uh, that kind of music is really big right now. You get this kind of very uh, kind of echoey, chambery feedback yeah. sound. Gives you <laughs> lots of like, so you can't really hear like where the one is so much. And everything kind of goes <laughs> wave of like ambient noise. So if you're into that whole world, you need a distortion as much as like a death metal player would. <laughs> yeah, people don't really think about it a lot but she is all about that cheap distortion <laughs> yeah but it, it has a different a special character you know even every pet i feel like every pedal has like its own character you know yeah, like uh, totally. that's why i think that's why there are so many out there there's so many options that it's is you know like people get confused with that but you know you're gonna find thousands of like overdrives thousands of drives thousands of fuzz but yeah. it's really finding the character you know, looking for just basically what appeals to your ears or if you're trying to sound like somebody, you know, probably looking into what they're using. That's probably going to help you a little bit, yeah. right? Yeah, no, the options out there are pretty, uh, like, overwhelming. I remember one time I was at a guitar shop, and I actually forget her name, but a player in a pretty big local band, like, walked in with, like, her whole entourage was following her. And she sat down with the guitar player. I was like, I'm going to try every... Sorry, the guitar salesman. I was like, I'm going to try every uh, distortion pedal you have. And he was like, we have 300. And she was just like, oh, damn, I guess I can't, can't do that. And this was just yeah. some guitar shop. Uh, yeah. So, like, there's so much out there. You gotta, you just gotta keep trying because you're never gonna play all of them. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, I think, you know, people, 
like you start off with the basics, especially, if, you know, like in the school, like you're getting started out, you just bought your electric guitar, you have your amp, and maybe your amp has like a clean and a distortion channel, maybe it's got some reverb on it. But like, that'll be the question, like, right? Why, why do you want to get start getting into pedals and effects? And I think that's a great example that you just you can just start experimenting and, and exploring the new sounds that you can get because drives is just like one category out of like many many different sounds that you can get and not that he's my favorite player but i think a good example is someone like the edge from u2 right. like his whole sound revolves around pedals and and delays and echoes and, re and like some songs are like without the pedal like he wouldn't be able to play that song yeah you know? seen, uh, seen it might get loud oh that that's exactly what i was thinking yeah. about <laughs> i love that i love that documentary um and, and you know Jimmy Page on that documentary, it always stuck with me. He was describing the overdrive pedal or distortion pedal. Mm -hmm. And he just said, it's just like a mean sound. Like what it does, it, it overdrives, the it overloads the signal. And you just got that like mean chunk in your face. You know, <laughs> that, that always like stuck with me, you know? Um, so let's talk a, a little bit about the different options. We'll, we'll break into maybe some more categories, mm -hmm. but... Like, let's say uh, some ways that people can access effects. And then what I'm thinking specifically is like pedals, multi effects units, right. and software, right? Those are like three options right now that people can access some break the bank more little. You want to talk a little bit about whichever one of those that you want? Yeah, sure. Um, I can get, I guess, a quick rundown of my thoughts on each. Sure. Um, yeah, yeah, go for yeah. it. Cool. So personally, I like real analog pedals. I found um, they give you this big kind of organic sound. Um, like I've got, let's kind of look right there. So I got a whole, I don't know if you can see that, I got a whole yes. kind of setup going on there. And I like to mix and match a lot. So uh, I have like the core th four I use live and then recording like every track. I might just like swap out this overdrive for that or dra overdrive or something like that. Because uh, I found when you have the real hardware, the real analog circuits, is you get this big, rich tone that is what I go for. Uh, I know I play a very kind of weird, washy guitar style, but it's still based in, like, very real kind of organic sounds. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're playing either with the multi-effects or the digital playing, it's not that those sounds are worse. They're just going to be a little bit more uh, digital sounding because, like, they're literally digital. Uh, so a lot of players who like play in kind of pop, uh, top 40 settings like multi-effects, you get this very crisp, clean sound. You typically don't need an amplifier. You should put those directly into a PA system. Uh, so it gives you this very, very clean, <laughs> pop-friendly sound. It's not going to have the oomph of a real amp or a real uh, pedal setup. But if you're playing with um, like a Taylor Swift type, you probably don't want that anyway. You want something a little bit more... Um, tactile, a little bit more, just kind of in the supporting role. Uh, then the uh, going directly in where everything is purely digital, so you don't even have the multi-effects unit, but you just go into the computer, it's like the further extreme of that. Everything is super like that, <laughs> um, <Yeah>. super <laughs> crisp, no no, no semblance of a real amplifier or real playing, but you're already going to get this really, really clean, very kind of electronic sound. So a lot of players in that kind of electronic world and the more kind of EDM music, and nowadays in industrial too, although you, back in the day, industrial, industrial players usually used amps because they came from that kind of punk background. But mm -hmm. now they tend to go direct in, uh, are going to be doing that. Cause you can get those, that's how you really get those crazy electronic tones and how you make the guitar sound the least like a guitar that is possible. <laughs> yeah. Which is kind of ironic, right? Trying to process it so much that it doesn't yeah. even sound like a guitar anymore <laughs> yeah i kind of get that though i was doing like an electronic project a while back and i was like i'm a bad keyboard player but mm, all right and all right i hope a guitar so I yeah was, uh, <laughs> so making these synth sounds on guitar and like making like witch house music that way so it's totally a thing uh if that's for what sure. you're going for <laughs> for sure for sure yeah something else that comes to mind too when thinking of like which obviously the practicality that you just said and also like it depends on budget and sometimes also like what you're doing, like ease of use, like for me, I have my pedal board, but unless I'm gigging, it's usually in there most of the time and I'm going software like 80% of the Not time. Really. Yeah, because for me, like like you said, it's you don't get that oomph, but the, for me, they're close enough that if I'm cutting demos or if I'm uploading to social media, which like compresses your sound anyway, you know, right. and stuff like that, I'm like, okay, I have like all my plugins, all my presets, my combinations, you know, my go-tos already saved that it's kind of, it takes me like three minutes, four minutes rather than miking up an amp 
or maybe playing, you know, like, cause I'll, and I know myself, I'll just get into like, start playing dial and start turning knobs and then I'll be there for like the next hour or so, yeah. which is, it's part of the fun for sure. But you know, if you're just trying to crank out a song or whatever it is that you need, maybe that's ease of use. And um, another one that I tell for students, especially when they're getting started, like if you've never messed around with pedals and, you know, it might be intimidating to go see that an overdrive is like 150, 200 bucks. Uh, you know, sometimes I say like, you know, get the multi effects just so you start like you have access to a lot. Are they going to be all like super high quality sounds? Probably not. But I remember my first unit was multi effects and I got to mess around with all the with wah, with an octave pedal, like all these things built into it. I kind of just messed around with it. And just to get familiar with how they can right. layer and interact with each other, you know? Yeah, I had uh, my first amp was one of those uh, Line 6 Spider 4s that, like, everyone has. Yes, made, I had made, the like, 3. <laughs> yeah, I had the 4. Yeah. That was the one that I was at when I was <laughs> that age. And, uh, yeah, and that, those are really good because they, I mean, they're cheap amps, like, but they're good for what they are, and they have all these built-in effects. So that was my first case to be like, okay, this is what a tremolo sounds like. This is a flanger. Um, so eventually I ended up selling the amp and using the money actually to buy some pedals. But yeah, that's a, that was a great way for me to like, experiment with those sounds and realize, oh, I really like these sounds. Like this is how a lot of the guitar players I like to listen to are doing it. Um, and I wouldn't really have, uh, I probably would have figured that stuff out eventually anyway, but it was way faster because I had this thing where it's all labeled and I could play with it. So, right. Yeah. I recommend yeah. getting something like that first. If you don't really know about these pedals at all, get something where you can try them all out. Just like you said, with a multi effects or like an amp with a built in. And then when you're ready to upgrade, either trade it in or just upgrade without trading it in. Yeah. Yeah, so, solid. Yeah, that's solid advice. Because for me, this it was the same deal. Like, I fell in love with, like, uh, pitch shifters and, like, a whammy octave pedals. But I don't, I don't know if I would have dropped 300 bucks on my first pedal <laughs> purchase, right? You know, because it's, it's kind of, like, weird and you got to mess around with it to, like, make it sound good. Right. So, you know, that kind of stuff. Why don't we uh, run through, like, a few effects and kind of what they do? I know we did like the big one, I think the drives, right. but why don't we, we run through a couple more and then we have Curtis coming in soon and he's going to tell us a little bit about like how you arrange uh, pedals and how you uh, maybe can start like shopping for new sounds and what kind of, what he looks for in pedals. So right, cool. let's do, let's start with compressors and equalizers. Cause I think these are subtle and right. sometimes misunderstood. Like they get kind of brushed to the side, but that's one thing I always have on mine. It's a compre like a compressor for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got a, I don't actually have an equalizer pedal, uh, but I do have this compressor, MXR custom comp. I got it a while back. It's a pretty solid one. It's kind of like mm -hmm. the country pedal. Um, a lot of country guys use the red version of this. I like this one because it's a little bit more like rock oriented, which is more what I do. Um, so really what compressors do is it's the same thing that a compressor unit would do in any sort of DAW uh, software. Is it a, kind of caps your output at either level so you don't play anything that's uh dynamically above this or anything dynamically below this and then you can use these knobs to kind of adjust that so the higher the output and it kind of pushes everything up dynamically the lower the output it kind of pulls everything down dynamically uh and then the sensitivity is just kind of like how harsh it is with those pulls so if it's all the way up um and it's going to really kind of pull everything dramatically if it's barely down it's uh not <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so it is very subtle it's a big part of country playing and it's a big part of like very technical metal playing that's that's how those guys in bands like dying fetus or cannibal corpse or black dahlia murder get those really kind of punchy super tight guitar tones it's a distortion mm -hmm. and a compressor together usually so i'm just gonna put this on my chain yeah and uh, we got ben fumbling around with his yeah. pedal board tonight yeah just sorry <laughs> no no you're all good man it's uh it's part of the fun. Yeah. A lot of my patch cables stopped working recently. So, um, yeah, I don't have as many things plugged into each other as I usually do until I get those gotcha. replaced. <laughs> All right, one sec. Yeah, give this some power. Um, uh, all right, here we go. All good, all good. All right, so... Ooh, that's... There we go. So the pressure's on now. You kind of hear it has a little bit more spank to it than it did before. So here it is without the compressor, just clean guitar tone, no other effects. Pretty 
pretty typical Fender on Fender tone there. Now I turn it on, and it's up pretty high right now to make it a bit more obvious what it's going to do. Yeah, so it gives, it's a lot kind of sharper, has more like an oomph to it, everything's a little bit more even. Uh, so you can get a lot of those kind of kind of like country blues. I'm not a great like honky tonk player, but <laughs> yeah, no, it's all good. Yeah, um, so that's that's how you get that. That is how you really get that classic country sound. Um, I remember I saw uh, the guitar player Johnny Highland uh, at mm -hmm. one point, and he was like kind of walking through his pedals because uh, it was like a room of mostly guitar players and uh yeah he's he said most rock players would just kind of go with the distortion but to him like the to him the compressor was like there's only one like desert island pedal it was that one right yeah uh, so here it is with the distortion too just get, you can't hear them together um so like super super this is like the heaviest tone i can really get with the setup it's <laughs> a distortion up all the way with a compressor up all the way right yeah well, you should play that riff uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's all good man yeah so that's right. a right. compressor on distortion there yeah, yeah, I always, I've always thought that it's, it's, it's subtle, but it really does give that bite. And and for those of you listening out there, I think also this, this pedal, it, it's hard to put. It's better when it's put in context, because when I used to, uh, when there was live gigging, the band I was playing on was sometimes a seven piece. So there's a lot of stuff going on, so it's easy to get buried in the mix. And I feel like the compressor, like, always helped me just cut through a little bit yeah. without like having to blast the volume or crank all the way up it's just to like oh i can hear him but he's not like louder yeah. than everybody else you yeah, know it's really it's really good for that yeah yeah so like you can hear your parts um and then maybe let's quickly run through the eq i know you you don't have to demo it but maybe we can just kind of talk about what it is a little bit um because it's another one i think that's useful for that like cutting through a mix without having to blast your your volume yeah, so just like the same way the compressor pedals can more or less do what a compressor and a DAW is going to do, and EQ is more or less going to do what an EQ and a DAW is going to do. So it lets you really dial in your mids, trebles, and basses, much like the knobs on your amplifier will, but the pedals can do it a lot more dramatically. So if you're really going for a super kind of scooped tone or a super bassy tone, uh, it's perfect for that. I used to have one, and I traded it in because I realized I was never really using it, but that's just me. <laughs> Um, yeah. If you're playing in a lot more of these kind of modern type bands, either on the metal end, but really on the kind of like electronic rock front, like if you're in like a Devo type band or like an industrial act, something like that, that's when players really use these because they're going for those big kind of guitar tones that really kind of lean one way hard, usually on the bass end. Uh, so that's a really good way to make those kind of like fat, bassy guitar sounds is with an EQ pedal. And sometimes the other way too is people really crank the treble and get these weird kind of like keyboard sounds. So uh, yeah, they're really good if you're going for those more dramatic um, kind of robotic guitar sounds is mm -hmm. one of the best pedals for that. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, cool, cool, man. Um, we have uh, Curtis on. So why don't we bring him on, talk to him for a little bit. And if we have a little bit of time, We'll keep running through this because right, this cool. hour is flying by. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's get him on and see what's up. There he is. Hey. What's going on, man? Hey, gang. What's up? How are you? I'm living it. How are you feeling? All good, man. All yeah, good. good. We're uh, we're live. Just FYI, I don't know if you can see from your end. Yeah, we're we're live. So. <laughs> thanks for coming on i i saw that you had a facebook live stream going on just a little while ago right yeah youtube facebook and instagram all every thursday at 6 p.m there you go man there you go yeah it was awesome i was like man he's uh he's live all day today so that's uh that's cool well thanks for taking the time curtis to come talk to us uh when we were doing this live stream i was like i know i have to talk to curtis yeah. <laughs> about, about this subject because um, I know you're a gearhead 
you're always into the pedals, into the amps. <laughs> yeah. If uh, yeah, if, if if we have a communication amongst our entire guitar school, it's always. By the way, I got a new pedal, and it's a good day. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, man. So something that uh, I wanted to ask you that that comes up, I think, pretty often, especially with beginners. You know, we're kind of thinking in the context of somebody that, you know, they have their electric guitar, they have their amp, and they're getting into, you know, pedals and things like that. Maybe they have a few. How do you go about arranging pedals? You know, like which one should go first? Maybe why, you know, like how much of this is subjective? How much of this is like, okay, this is what it's going to do to your, your tone, your sound. Can you maybe run us through a little bit? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to run through just real quick. Like, what are the effects? just as a triple like oh i've never even heard of uh, this not every single you know type of effect but but just kind of like the general categories um and i'm going to do this in, in in a certain order because the certain order aspect of it at all is how they play together it's like you know you're you're building a movie or a uh, you know a play or something and there's there's an or uh, writing a book and there's an established understanding of how to you know, do that. We, we've, we've tried every kind of variety we can. We assume, you know, oh, I'll try this one over there and then this one over there. And, and then we keep finding every time you got to put this one up front. You got to put that one over there. And uh, so uh, one of the first ones that my uh, guitar pedal uh, board always has is a tuner. Now, that seems like a simple one. Why would we want to tune? Well, a uh, tuner, because, well, if we're not in tune, the performance is going to just be awful. So tuner, number one. And the greatest thing about most tuners is that they have something in there called a buffer. The, uh, the buffer, in a very kind of short explanation, is like if you have a water hose and you have like a 40-foot water hose, you don't have much water pressure. But if you put a nozzle at the end of it, that is a buffer. And so you can have a really long guitar cable and that tuner at the front kind of gives you a boost to your signal to make sure that it, it doesn't have loss, like signal degradation. So that's really important. The number one uh, old uh, standard is the Boss TU2 or TU3 now. It's just the Boss tuner and it has a really great uh, buffer and it, it saves your signal. So number one, tuner. Um, for me, and this isn't for everybody, um, a compressor goes next. And very simply, a compressor takes the sound that's uh, coming out of your guitar and it helps raise the volume of the quiet notes and helps keep the really loud notes a little bit more compressed and, and lowered so that you still have a dynamic range, but it's not like, ah, ah, and you just want, you want a very clear presence. We hear compressors on television and our computers and, and uh, movies and, and on music. So compressor is the number two thing that I always hit on the way in. Um, other types of effects like this that are very early on in the pedal order is a volume pedal in which it just, when you push the pedal this way, it gives you your volume and you roll it back. It's just like turning down a, a setting on a light, you know, just dimming it. Um, there's another one called a noise gate that kind of helps automatically go after some noise if, if it's like really loud and distorted. Uh, some people put that at the end of their pedal board, but uh, I, I don't personally use one, but they, they can be very helpful. Um, so that's just like signal maintenance, clarity, just making, uh, you know, everything's like, okay, we're all ready to go. So uh, that's the first part. The second is uh, something we kind of re refer to as dirt. Dirt just means that uh, we have that clean guitar signal coming in, but we're going to add a little bit of distortion or overdrive or fuzz or boost, something that raises the, the, uh, the gain of it, and it stops it. So it's not super loud. It just has a distorted tone. It has a <laughs> different sound. So there are four types, and typically I have like all four on my pedal board. It's one's called a boost, which all three of these could be a boost, arguably, but uh, it just raises the signal, keeps it as the same signal, just louder. Overdrive, which is just a little bit of dirt to your sound. Distortion, which is quite a bit 
of, of dirt so that's that next level and fuzz which is slamming that signal to the wall so those are those are early ones and you want that early on because everything else feeds into it. and again this is tried and true you can arguably put those in the later parts of your pedal board but early on if you have an overdrive or a distortion pedal it make it like one of the very first pedals uh, we hear about a wah-wah, like Jimi Hendrix wah-wah, or 70s like soul and disco kind of vibe. And that wah-wah wants to go pretty far early too. Now, importantly, I personally put the wah-wah uh, at the very beginning before the compressor to help raise the signal just a little bit and then also keep it very balanced because it's a, it's a very harsh sound if it doesn't have a nice little uh, parameters to tame it. So having that wah before the compressor can be very helpful. Um, that, that is arguable. Some people can put that after the compressor, or whatever, whatever. So that, that one's personal taste. Um, the next stage, so you can get a clear signal to it, is what we call an octave pedal, where it'll take your sound and raise it up an octave. You know, it'll just pitch it. So it's a, a octave or a pitch shift or a harmonizer. You want those as early on as you can in the process so that it gets a good, clear uh, signal so it knows what information it's trying to move. Uh, the next stage is called modulation. And that's where we mess with the frequencies of the sound, the, the, uh, the parameters of the sound. It's like airplane sounds and whoosh sounds and out of tune sounds, all on purpose to give you this kind of fun sound. Think about uh, the beginning of Come As You Are from Nirvana. And that sound is modulated. That's, uh, that effect is called a chorus sound. And when you go listen to Come As You Are, you go, oh yeah, dun, 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 dun. it's not clean. It has a little bit of something to it. And that's a chorus, that's modulation. Other three main types, phaser, flange, and univibe. Just different flavors of fun messing with the sound. And uh, at the very end of your signal is what we call the time-based uh, guitar effects. And uh, those have vibrato. Um, I would say that those involve vibrato, tremolo, echo, delay, and reverb. Uh, and so Vibrato and tremolo are kind of affecting either the pitch slightly, where it's a or the volume on and off. Uh, think about the opening of uh, Boulevard of Broken Dreams from Green Day, and that is a tremolo pedal. It kind of sounds like a helicopter. Super cool. Echo and delay is like the beginning of um, uh, The Wall Part 2 or uh, the beginning of Welcome to the Jungle from... Uh, Guns N' Roses, where you hear that da -da 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 that little echo. Echo and delay are very similar. Um, and then reverb is like being in a cavern and just hearing a very big bloom of beautiful sound. Uh, kind of an echo, but it's not exact repeats. It's more like being in a big hall or a cavern. Um, and those, those are pretty much all the types of effects. The very last one you put at the very end is what we call a loop pedal that can record what you're playing and then send it and like let it play while you play over it. So you can have two guitar parts, four guitar parts. So uh, while that was fairly comprehensive, it's, it's all about, you know, tuning and compression, dirt, pitch shifting, modulation, and time-based effects, which means echo and reverb and tremolo. Dude, you came to save this live stream, bro. That was... The best explanation, like, because Ben and I were, like, fumbling back and forth about mm -hmm. dirt, overdrive, this and that. Yeah. And then you just broke it down for, especially the arranging part and why, you know? Yeah. Like, there, There's so much to why. And there is, like, a billion-dollar industry on why and how. And YouTube is, like, the best resource that's ever happened to me as a musician because I, all day, every day, I'm watching the JS... Uh, JHS live streams with Josh Scott or five watt world that guy's incredible um, or uh, reviews from the manufacturers Keely mm -hmm. Electronics put out a new pedal today uh, old pedal but with a new artist I watched it took me two minutes and I learned so much about this thing 
that I'm like this particular sound and vibe that I'm trying to achieve. And that's that's the goal with uh, the arrangement of these these pedals, is is that. Um, it's like having an accent as an actor. Like, okay, you're gonna play a British guy. Well, you, you need that British accent in your grab bag of tricks. Okay, now you're gonna play a Polish guy and you gotta know how to kind of do that. Um, and, and that's what these effects can do. They, they kind of can manipulate our voice to give the authentic thing that we're looking for uh, to match the mood of the music and the vibe that we're trying to um, exude. I love that, man. Yeah, I love that an analogy. It's, it's perfect because it is like switching dialects if you want to uh, think about it like that, you know, shifting the, the tone a little bit. Um, let me ask you, because I know I know you sh you should like you said, you shop for pedals and stuff like that. And what what is it? I know this is kind of a generic question, but like, what is it that you're looking for? when you're shopping around for a new pedal, you know, nothing too specific, but what are some things that man? Okay. That one versus like, cause we look at the options out there. There's thousands of pedal, like it'd thousands. be impossible to go through all of them. Right. So what is something that makes you say, okay, I want that one, but not these other four pedals or whatever. Yeah. It's, it's uh, it can be a little tricky because there's a little like um, strain of envy pedal envy in this game, because there's a company called Empress. I, I, I played uh, this Empress re, uh, reverb at this recording studio back in St. Louis. For the, I was on one session out of nowhere, and the guy had a really nice set of pedals, and I plugged it in, and it blew my mind. That reverb's like $500. And it's like, I'm never going to buy that. It's, a, it's insane. And I can't take it on the road, because if I get that pedal board you know, taken or break it or something, it's $500. But the great thing within that is I don't need that per se. It's expansive. But what you really want is maybe uh, try to find a pedal. Sometimes those multi-effects or ones that promise they have 40 options, they have 40 so-so options. So what <laughs> what's really good is trying to find um, a pedal that has three options and all three of them are really killer. Even though this one's a little expensive, I want to talk about this one because I, I was just like hesitant because I was going to go for the big boy that had the 100 options from this company. But I pulled the trigger on one called uh, the Flint, uh, the Strymon Flint, and it is a reverb pedal. It also has tremolo over there, which again is that thing that uh, makes the volume kind of go on and off, like wah, 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 kind of that vibe. And the reverb is that kind of cavern sound. Um, it only has three settings, essentially. That's it, and all of them are amazing. You have the tweakability with the knobs, but the, 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 the limitation helps you focus and find your good sounds in that box. So um, if you want to go get a, a, a dirt pedal, you know, an overdrive, uh, you, uh, a $500 king of tone doesn't mean it's gonna be the tone that you like. Because my first pedal that I really fell in love with when I really started getting into this about four years ago was the uh, uh, Soul Food from Electro Harmonics, which is an overdrive. It's built off of a, a, um, a very revered 90s um, pedal that's very hard to get. And it is $3,000 on the aftermarket right now. We don't want to, we don't have to have that because this $50 pedal from Electro Harmonics is so close to identical that you can get a real sound. You can sound like the thing that you're trying to sound like in terms of, you know, copying, you know, slashes sound or something. And then also you can have an enjoyable sound that you can spend some time with. So um, s simplicity, I think, is, is a part of it. I, I, I sometimes have the tendency to want to have the options, even a pedal with like 14 knobs when it could really have three. So I, I say one thing you're looking for early-ish on uh, simplicity. Um, I absolutely almost always agree with, uh, you know, the top five delay pedals of 2021. Just do that one research and it'll bring up the five best ones legitimately. And within there is the one that's in the price range. There's the $500 one and the $400 one and the $300 one, but there's also the 200 and the 150 and the 100 and the 75. So, uh, Trust the list because people put a ton of time into this. So just uh, trust them and, and try it out. And you know what? It might not work for you. And, that, and that's okay. 
Uh, so, so simplicity, I think, is a big one. Trusting those lists and, and the YouTube channels because people put their, you know, lives into this kind of thing. Um, and uh, and try some classics. I think I think that's a, a really important one. So if we hear that there's something called a tube screamer, it's an overdrive that is the most sold guitar pedal of all time. It's the most famous overdrive, at least. Um, if you don't have one and you've never tried one and you don't even know what it sounds like, you're not getting the chance to say, is that the kind of sound I want to use or not? So, you know, you can get pretty inexpensive one. Electro harmonics is great for pretty much every single style and they're all inexpensive and they're New York based. So I love supporting them in those regards too. Um, so, uh, you can try out effects. You can go the, 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 the cheaper route up front just to see if you like a tube screamer. I got the East River Drive from Electro Harmonics on my big board. I, I made some mods to it, but it's incredible. Incredible. So, um, and I, I used the Soul Food for five years and like 85 recordings. It was a solid pedal. Uh, and I upgraded, and my small upgrade was like $100 more. 75 gotcha. more. Yeah, that's that's awesome, man. Yeah, it's, it seems like you're you're negotiating right between quality, what you want, and price. You know, mm -hmm. and kind of finding a sweet spot in somewhere in the middle there. Um, but great, great explanation. We have a question in the chat. If maybe I could toss it your way, absolutely. And it's uh, is there much of a difference in terms of quality between the sound of? Uh, I always have trouble saying this brand name. Uh, Behringer. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. I think Behringer is how I heard Behringer. It. Yeah. That's and <laughs> yeah, I've never know. I always say it in my head. I don't think I've said it out loud and boss pedals. So, uh, I'm, a um, because he has not steered me wrong yet. I'm a little allegiant to Josh Scott from JHS and he has a hundred plus videos on YouTube. Um, really diving into things such as, you know, the history of fuzz, the history of distortion, uh, you know, delay and reverb machines you've never heard of. Um, and so he did a series uh, on both of those pedals. And the first one is called Boss's Best. So there, there's my first answer. So between the two, Boss's Best. And, and I agree with him. As I look on my board, I've got... Oh, interesting. I don't have any on that board, but... Yeah, I've got three over here, and I've got two more boss pedals I will never sell in the history of my life. Um, as we talked earlier, almost every single boss pedal in it has that buffer that increases your signal that we talked about. So you're 10 pedals into you know this big board, and there's a boss pedal right in the middle that has a buffer, and it restores power to your signal. And, uh, and helps clear things up so that you don't have this dull, dead... Uh, sound that doesn't have high end. So Boss is good in that regard. I don't, off the top of my head, remember if Behringer has uh, buffers in them, but uh, it is known that the Boss buffer is, is best. And so that's why they're best. They have every flavor. They're pretty inexpensive. They're ubiquitous. So you can find them on, you know, Craigslist and, and Reverb and uh, their Boss is best between the two. Uh, Behringer, watch the video from Josh Scott of JHS and see if there's not some counter to that argument. Awesome. Uh, of those pedals we demoed earlier, two were actually Boss. The Distortion was the Boss HM1. Oh, actually, sorry, I misspoke. The ST2, HM1's what I used to have. And the Fuzz is the FC5. Uh, oh, yeah. We didn't show any Behringers earlier, but these are my two favorite Boss pedals that are out there. I don't have it anymore, but I had the... I forget which which number it was, but the the delay pedal, the boss delay, and that one, like it it always seemed solid for me. Like it just it did the job. It sounded great, and you know, like I experimented with the flashback for a bit and with some other delay pedals, but that one, like I don't know, boss pedals are just they're just solid, you know. There's, yeah, there's two flavors from Boss on on their delays, the analog or the digital, and their analogs are always very well renowned. Um, and then the, di but, but the digital too, I had the DD3 and the DD5 and the DD7 for a decade. You, you just don't want to let it go. I've, I've made yeah. some, some of my favorite records I've ever made. I made with the, that delay pedal. 
Um, I want to show you real quick three of my boss pedals that I dig. Please. Beep. Yeah. This turned from uh, intro to effects, explain to uh, bo is. boss pedal demo. <laughs> uh, there it is. So, uh, the, so there's that tuner I was telling you about. That, that tuner has the, uh, yeah, it's just the standard. Uh, the middle one is a great chorus built off of their original chorus from way back when. You see that little uh, sign right there. It says Waza, Waza Craft, and that is their high-end version. And the last one is a synthesizer pedal, but that's that's not a normal. That's not a normal thing. <laughs> it's a it's a specialty one, but cool nonetheless. <laughs> I like that uh, line six too, man. I haven't seen that in a while. The yeah, uh, so I I just got pedal. that uh, last fall. It's newish to me and. I just, you know, you see it on the big boards of like Niels Klein and uh, Terrace Milos and uh, like all these really cool bands. And mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. oh God, what, minus the bear. The, oh, Nick dude. Reinhardt from that. Yeah. It's the coolest. If you, if everybody, everybody stop everything you're doing after this and go watch, uh, I think it's the premier guitar rig rundown. So, you know, a rundown of all of your, your equipment. Of uh, I think his name's Nick Reinhardt from Minus the Bear. Yeah, it's the coolest thing I've ever seen. That's pedal envy, times ten. <laughs> yeah, so they're all I about they're all about riffs. They're all about like pedals and gear and just making really cool music with with every everything they got. And I was I was actually gonna bring up a uh, premier guitar because that's something I used to watch a lot of like the rig rundowns because you really get uh, a solid picture of you know maybe what some of your favorite bands or guitarists are using you know from guitar amps pedals and everything in between you know yeah they're they're very helpful in that regard mm -hmm. uh last question before we let you go curtis and this one came yesterday on instagram if you could only have two pedals which would it be so i've just i amend that question or that answer rather uh probably once every two weeks <laughs> um I'm in I'm in a controversial zone right now because I'm I'm going to say two that you would never expect. Well, at least one you would never expect. I think. Hold on, let me think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tough question. Yeah, the same one is going for you, Ben. Eventually, but okay. so think think about it. <laughs> yeah, I think I know my answer. If I can let Curtis go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unless you need a moment. <laughs> okay, I, so this is really hard, but I uh, this is what I'm feeling right now, and it's built off of. Uh, you know, being in the studio, being on stage, doing it and going, oh, 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 oh that was it. <laughs> I got, I, I, I was in the studio all day Friday. I, I did a record for uh, this artist and I, I got this new pedal. It was the first time I got to go into the studio with this thing. And I got first time ever Stairway to Heaven tones. The outro when he's doing all this noodling behind yeah. his other solo and the... I got the tone. <laughs> and I'll tell you how, and that's why they're my two favorite right now. Uh, the J Rocket Archer. I got a special one recently. It's it's the Jeff Beck mod. Uh, it's expensive. Don't get it. Don't research it. It was it was potentially a stupid buy. But if it's my favorite, then I guess it wasn't. Um, and uh, the Epoch Boost from Catlin Bread, which is an old preamp, this old, uh, you know, kind of early channel of this big old tape machine that would record your sound and then make a, an echo of it instantly. Just the little, um, it's like plugging into the machine was this magic sound. And so they've finally taken that magic sound from the machine. The machine is huge and it's like, you know, $2,000 and all this other stuff. They put it in a normal size pedal and it gets you um, a uh, kind of like an EQ knob and a boost knob. And it gets you this Van Halen, Led Zeppelin sound I've been looking for, Eric Johnson sound I've been looking for, for a decade. Oof. So it's called the Catlin Bread Epoch Boost not all that 140 not not that bad and then the j archer uh, j rocket archer which is built off of the mythical clon centaur 
and uh, it is unparalleled. Quite mythical title, yeah. <laughs> These, oh man, did you see uh, Suk posting his uh, Klon pedal? What well, I think it was a Klon. Oh, he's um, got a Klon now. I think so. Oh, I, I could, I could be wrong, but I think he posted a Klon, and he was like, "How much should I sell this for?" <laughs> it goes for three now, so that's how much. Three thousand dollars. That's wow. crazy, man. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, dude, Curtis, thank you so much. I feel like. Uh, You've got a PhD in uh, guitar pedals and effects, man. This was amazing. Well, it's even more fun when you start opening up and start modding them. It's crazy. <laughs> oh, man. That's, uh, it's going to be uh, chapter two of this because that's, that's a whole other uh, wormhole to go down, man. Oh, but... I got to hear Ben's. Ben, what are, your, <laughs> oh, what are your two? Sorry. You can't yeah. deal without. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, so my two are uh, the distortion pedal we were playing earlier. So I really like this. That's, uh, power it's... stack. Yeah, it's my old sound like an old Marshall um, amplifier, but I'm more of a Fender amp guy, so like, it still gives me that like crunchy distortion I like. And uh, I usually keep it around noon, so it does have that more kind of classic rock vibe. But back when I was in a sludge metal band, I turned it all the way up, and it was as heavy as anything else. I actually ended up trading in an HM2 for this pedal because it could do the uh, job. Great. I was going to also dial it back. But my all-time favorite pedal is the uh, Abominable Electronics Unholy Grail, which is this guy right here. So it's this uh, boutique uh, pedal company, I think from Arkansas. Uh, this one guy makes them all, and essentially what he does is he takes well-known pedals and he makes clones of them that sound a bit thicker and darker. It's catered mostly towards like doom metal bands. Um, that's what I, they kind of used to use people at Bread and Butter, which is where I got a bunch of his pedals, but now I'm in like a dream pop band, but I still find they work as well. Uh, so it's a really, really intense analog electronic pedal, uh, sorry, analog uh, delay pedal. And it has really intense uh, delays. And then what's really cool is this feedback knob is you can dial in the feedback. So it super feeds back when it's all the way here. And it's almost nothing here. So I use this to create kind of noise landscapes all the time. Uh, so I also do like noise music. This is the main pedal for that. It gives me like all these weird things to control. And then it has a built-in boost pedal. And it also has a dampener on it. Love so it. I can do really anything with this. Um, my band's last signal, uh, single is called Skinless. I don't know if anyone's heard it. Uh, but those like weird ambient kind of surging textures that everyone kind of thought were keyboards was really just me playing with this pedal through uh, this guitar through this Fender amp. So this pedal is, if I can only have one pedal, it'd be this guy. <laughs> What's the brand, uh, the company again? Abominable Electronics. Like nice. The snowman, but, you yeah. know what? I have, I have heard of them. That's yeah. Great. Their best known pedal is the Hail Satan, which is a yeah. mod on the Big Muffs uh, Super Fuzz, but they made it super, super heavy. I also have one of those somewhere. Uh, I think it's in my closet right now. Uh, That's killer. I'm I'm gonna go research that now. Oh, they're awesome. Yeah. That oh, and one great. last thing. I, yeah. Uh, I just put something on. I I spent, I spent like three hours last night on my. I have a travel board because I play concerts, but you know, in the real days, um, and so I can't take my big spaceship pedal board with me, and I don't want to take a bunch of loose pedals. So I have a small little travel pedal board. I call it the subway board. Um, uh, and so I, I retooled that last night. And one thing that's kind of annoying about um, when you want to insert a new pedal, potentially you have to change your cables, you know, because the, the links may change because the distances between the pedals change. You may have to change the order because, again, they, there's a very specific way that they all interact with each other well. It's kind of like this crescendo cascade kind of thing kind of a approach. So I got a new overdrive pedal and I got to recommend it to everybody because it's very inexpensive and it gets you both this kind of, you know, fun, like uh, tube screamery uh, kind of woody sound. And also I found out it does a Hendrix fuzz face out of nowhere. How can you have such versatility in, in one itsy bitsy tiny little pedal? It's a mini pedal too, um, from Hamburg, Germany, I believe. Uh, so it's the uh, the uh, company is called Nobles, N O B E L S, and this is called the O D R One Mini. I think it's like seventy dollars. Wow! And it's tiny, and it's really handy. I um, uh, it takes some getting used to, and it has a little different controls than what we think they they're going to be. So that's that's a trick with it but the odr mini is a 70 dollars gateway into trying a whole bunch of different sounds and really getting something cool i got this hendrix tone out of nowhere last night 
and I ended up basing my entire show on Hendrix today because of this pedal last night. So I, I had to mention it. It's uh, it blew my mind. Cool. That's dope, man. Yeah. Definitely ODR one mini. Out. Cool, man. Cool. Very cool. Thank you, Curtis. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you guys thanks. for having me. Yeah. yeah. For uh, dropping the knowledge. Thank you, Ben. Yeah, of course. Yeah, man. And with that, till next time. All right. Thank you, buddy. Mm-hmm.